Welcome to Mindscapes, Mapping the Terrain of Human Thought, brought to you by Mindful Literary. In this audiobook, we invite you to embark on a profound exploration of the human mind, an intricate landscape where every thought is a pathway, each emotion a landmark, and every decision a turning point. Imagine your mind as a vast, unexplored territory, rich with potential and complexity. Together, we will traverse this terrain delving into the foundational elements of how we process information, the powerful influence of culture, language, and technology, and the ever-evolving science of consciousness. This journey will take us through the mysteries of memory, the power of imagination, and the balance between logic and emotion. We'll examine how cultural narratives shape our identity, how technology molds our thoughts, and how mindfulness can bring clarity to the daily chaos. Mindscapes isn't just a study of the mind. It's an invitation to reflect on your own mental landscape. With insights into cognitive evolution, emotional intelligence, and the impact of societal norms, this audiobook will empower you to understand and shape your thoughts more intentionally, leading to a richer, more fulfilling life. Mindful Literary is committed to providing you with meaningful and thought-provoking content that enhances your understanding of yourself and the world. So, let's begin this journey together, mapping the fascinating terrain of human thought and uncovering the insights that lie within. Chapter 1. The Landscape of Thought Understanding the Mind's Terrain Our mind is not a simple entity. It is a complex structure composed of various layers that interact constantly to shape our thoughts and feelings. Imagine these layers like a deep ocean, where the surface is often agitated and chaotic, representing our immediate thoughts, worries, and distractions. As we dive deeper, we encounter the currents of our beliefs, values, and memories, some of which can be turbulent, while others remain calm and clear. For instance, when we experience a sharp emotional response to a situation, it often stems from these deeper layers, colored by past experiences or learned behaviors. Understanding this internal landscape allows us to navigate our thoughts more effectively giving us the chance to emerge from temporary storms with a clearer view of ourselves and our choices. The metaphor of landscapes vividly illustrates the intricacies of mental processes. Picture your mind as a vast wilderness, filled with mountains, valleys, and rivers, each representing different aspects of your psyche. The mountains, towering with the weight of your aspirations and fears, manifest challenges we strive to overcome. Valleys might symbolize moments of introspection, or sadness, where we retreat to reflect. Your pathways through this landscape are defined by how you think, interpret, and react to experiences. Sometimes, paths are well-trodden, guiding us towards familiar emotional responses, while others are wild and overgrown, untouched routes leading to personal growth and self-discovery. This imagery emphasizes that the mind is not static. It evolves as we accumulate experiences, reshape beliefs, and seek new perspectives. Consider the notion that the mind's terrain can shift with our responses to experiences. If you're navigating through dense fog, representing confusion or uncertainty, pinpointing a destination can be difficult. However, by paying attention to the way you process thoughts and emotions, you can clear the fog and illuminate your path. This understanding fosters greater awareness of how our stories intertwine with our mental landscapes serving as reminders that we hold the potential to explore our intricate interiors. A practical tip to enhance this journey is to engage in mindful practices. Taking just a few minutes each day to breathe deeply and observe your thoughts without judgment can illuminate hidden layers of your mind, helping you comprehend the vast landscape that exists within. How Thoughts Shape Reality Thoughts are not merely fleeting whispers in our minds, they are powerful forces that significantly shape our perception of reality. The way we think influences how we interpret the events and experiences we encounter. For instance, two people may face the same challenging situation, but their reactions and subsequent experiences can be vastly different based on their beliefs and thought patterns. If one person believes that obstacles are opportunities for growth, they may approach challenges with optimism and resilience, seeing them as stepping stones rather than setbacks. This mindset can lead to the actualization of such beliefs, where the world feels more welcoming and full of possibilities. Meanwhile, the other person, 
who harbors doubts and fears may perceive the same events as overwhelming and disheartening, reinforcing a cycle of negativity that clouds their reality. In essence, our thoughts can act like a lens through which we view the world, profoundly shaping our experiences and emotions. Real-life examples abound, illustrating how positive thinking can lead to transformative outcomes. Take, for instance, the story of a man named James who faced severe health challenges after a car accident. Initially overwhelmed and consumed by despair, he began to shift his thinking after attending a motivational seminar. Inspired by the speakers, he embraced the belief that he could recover and thrive despite his circumstances. He set small, attainable goals and celebrated each victory, no matter how minor. Over time, his health improved, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally as well. This shift in perspective played a crucial role in his healing process, proving that our inner dialogue can indeed influence our external reality. Similarly, research supports this journey from thought to tangible change, showing that individuals who maintain a positive outlook often experience better health and enhanced life satisfaction. The stories of those who have transformed their lives through the power of positive thinking remind us of the incredible potential that lies within our minds. When navigating through the complexities of life, Remember that your thoughts can serve as either anchors or sails. Embracing an optimistic mindset can heighten your ability to confront challenges, opening doors to new opportunities. Cultivating positive thinking doesn't mean ignoring difficulties. It means choosing to respond to them with resilience and hope. Start by replacing negative thoughts with constructive affirmations and observe how subtle shifts in your thinking can lead to profound changes in your life. Even small steps, such as keeping a gratitude journal or practicing daily affirmations, can reinforce a mindset that sees the glass as half full rather than half empty. This approach not only enriches your perception of reality, but also prepares you to face whatever comes your way with a spirit of determination and positivity. The role of emotions in thought processes. Emotions are not just fleeting feelings, they are powerful forces that shape our thoughts and influence our decision-making in profound ways. When we experience an emotion, whether it's joy, sadness, anger, or fear, it colors our perception of reality and filters the information we process. This influence can manifest in various ways, such as swaying our judgments or motivating our actions. For instance, when we feel happy, we might view a challenging situation through a lens of optimism leading us to take risks we wouldn't otherwise consider. Conversely, fear can make us overly cautious, prompting us to miss opportunities that could lead to growth. Understanding this interplay can provide us with incredible insights into our behavior, revealing that emotions are not obstacles to rational thought, but integral components of it. The truth is, emotions and thoughts dance together, creating a complex choreography that ultimately guides our lives. Reflecting on some of my own life experiences, I recall a time when an unexpected wave of nostalgia hit me while going through old photographs. In that moment, I felt a deep longing for my childhood, and it sparked insights I had never considered before. This emotional response led me to rethink some of my life's choices, like how I had drifted away from activities that once brought me joy. The flood of memories allowed me to connect dots that were previously scattered across my life it suddenly made sense why I felt unfulfilled in certain areas. Such moments remind us that emotions have the power to open doors in our minds, encouraging us to explore paths we might have overlooked. They can guide us towards unexpected revelations, reminding us of who we are and what we truly value. As we navigate our daily lives, we can cultivate a deeper awareness of our emotions and their impact on our thoughts. A practical approach is to take a moment to pause and acknowledge whatever emotion we're feeling throughout the day. This simple act of mindfulness can lead to valuable insights and help us make decisions that align more closely with our true selves. By recognizing the role emotions play in our thought processes, we can better harness them to enhance our understanding of ourselves and those around us, ultimately fostering a greater sense of clarity and purpose in our lives. Chapter 2. Cognitive Maps, Navigating Human Thought, Mental Models and Their Importance 
Mental models are the frameworks through which we interpret and understand our world. They are deep-seated beliefs, assumptions, and generalizations that shape how we perceive reality and make decisions. Imagine your mind as a vast library filled with books and information compiled from personal experiences, conversations, and teachings throughout your life. Each book represents a mental model, a way to simplify complex realities and make sense of diverse experiences. These models help us navigate life by categorizing information, predicting outcomes, and influencing our behaviors based on past lessons learned. For instance, when you encounter a challenge at work, your mental models influence how you approach the problem, whether you see it as an obstacle or an opportunity for growth. Throughout history, many successful thinkers have harnessed powerful mental models to propel themselves and their ideas forward. Consider Albert Einstein, who often used thought experiments to simplify intricate concepts in physics. His model of thought allowed him to abstract complicated ideas into simpler forms, which led to groundbreaking theories about relativity. Similarly, the successful investor Warren Buffett relies on a variety of mental models when making decisions, including the margin of safety concept. By establishing a framework that prioritizes value over hype, Buffett has navigated the uncertainties of financial markets with remarkable skill. These examples illustrate how effective mental models can significantly enhance our ability to think critically and creatively. Understanding and refining your own mental models can lead to profound personal and professional growth. Start by identifying the mental models you currently use in everyday scenarios. Reflect on how these models have shaped your decisions and responses to events in your life. This introspective process can reveal patterns in your thinking and help you recognize where adjustments might be necessary. For instance, if you're inclined to see failure as a definitive endpoint rather than a stepping stone, rebranding that mental model can empower you to embrace challenges more openly. Adopting and adapting diverse mental models can boost your problem-solving skills, enhance your adaptability, and ultimately enrich your life's journey. The geography of memory. Memories are complex constructs, residing not in neat compartments, but rather woven together in a dense web of connections throughout our minds. When we think about how memories are stored, it's almost like envisioning a mental map where each landmark is forged from experiences, smells, sounds, and emotions. Neurons fire together, creating pathways of remembrance that can lead us back to moments long past with startling clarity. Sometimes, a single smell or sound can trigger an entire sequence of events, bringing a moment rushing back as vividly as if it were happening in real time. This retrieval process is often spontaneous, driven by association. It's a fascinating interplay between memory and identity, revealing how place and experience shape who we are. Exploring this geography of memory often leads us to think about how significant events become anchored to specific locations. For instance, consider a childhood home or a favorite park. Each corner and crevice of those places can be infused with personal stories. Perhaps a swing in the backyard witnessed youthful laughter, or a spot under the old oak tree became a sanctuary for daydreams. When we revisit these places, it's as though we're opening a treasure chest of memories, allowing us to relive those moments with every step. Memory retrieval can be both exhilarating and bittersweet. It opens doors to the past that remind us of what we cherished and what we've lost along the way. My formative years were spent in a small town with winding streets that seemed to hold secrets in every crevice. One of my most vivid memories is of the Corner Cafe, where the smell of fresh coffee mingled with the sounds of laughter and conversation. The small tables filled with regulars became a backdrop for countless moments shared with friends. Moments that cemented our bonds over shared stories and dreams. Every time I catch a whiff of brewing coffee, I am transported back to that cafe, where time seemed to stretch, and every cup held conversations that shaped my outlook on life. Mapping problem-solving techniques. Analyzing various problem-solving frameworks reveals that each one carries its unique flavor, tailored to different contexts and needs. For instance, the classic approach of defining the problem, brainstorming solutions, and then implementing the most viable option is cherished for its simplicity. 
However, frameworks like the Kepner-Trego method offer a more structured analysis, considering decision trees and consequence mapping, which can be particularly useful for corporate dilemmas. Still, let's not forget the agile methodology, frequently embraced in software development, which promotes flexibility and rapid iteration. It's fascinating how each technique can lead to dramatically different outcomes based on the problem at hand and the people involved in the process. Thinking back to a challenge I faced while organizing a community event, it quickly became clear that employing a straightforward listing method kept discussions clear and actionable. This blend of practical frameworks underlines the importance of context in problem solving and how our individual experiences shape our choices. Mental maps emerge as an even more dynamic approach, allowing us to visualize and manipulate complex issues effortlessly. Imagine unfolding layers of a problem, much like peeling an onion. An interactive example might involve a scenario where a team must decide on a new product launch. By creating a mental map, they could arrange ideas like customer insights, market research findings, and production capabilities in a format that allows for real-time engagement and modification. One time, while grappling with planning a family road trip, I drew out a map that incorporated destinations, potential stops, and even the moods of different family members. It helped pinpoint where our interests aligned and where they clashed, leading to a far more harmonious decision-making process. Through these interactive examples, we see how mental maps encourage creativity, facilitate collaboration, and ultimately guide individuals and groups toward thoughtful and effective solutions. Chapter 3. The Influence of Culture on Thought Patterns, Cultural Narratives, and Personal Identity. Cultural stories have a profound impact on how we perceive ourselves and the world around us. These narratives passed down through generations shape our values, beliefs, and even our aspirations. Consider the tales told around a dinner table or the folklore of a community. They are not mere stories, but lessons and ideals steeped in history and experience. Each narrative offers a lens through which we interpret our existence, creating a canvas on which we paint our identities. For instance, growing up listening to my grandmother recant her childhood during a time of hardship, I learned resilience and the importance of family. Such stories instilled in me a sense of belonging and a framework for understanding the challenges I would later face in life. Essentially, cultural narratives serve as the very fabric of our identities, intertwining personal experiences with historical context and communal values. Relating personal narratives reveals just how deeply cultural influences weave into the core of our identities. I recall an incident from my university days where I attended an event celebrating diverse cultures. I was paired with a student from a different background and as we exchanged stories of our upbringings, it was enlightening to see how our cultural narratives shaped our perspectives. My friend shared how traditional values informed her career choices, while I talked about how embracing modernity did not require me to shed my cultural heritage. Each of our stories showcased the role culture played in shaping our decisions and our sense of self. It was not merely an exchange of narratives, it was a melding of identities that illuminated our similarities and differences. This experience reinforced my understanding that our personal narratives are not isolated tales, but extensions of the larger cultural narratives we inherit. To foster a greater understanding of how cultural narratives contribute to individual identity, it's valuable to engage with stories beyond our own. Exploring literature and media from different cultures can expand our perspectives challenge preconceived notions, and foster empathy. By doing so, we can navigate the rich tapestry of narratives that define us and others. Each story we encounter adds depth to our understanding of identity and community. The next time you find yourself sharing or hearing a story, pay attention to the underlying cultural messages. You might discover new insights about yourself and the world around you. The impact of societal norms on decision-making. Societal expectations create a backdrop against which our decisions are made, often framing our choices without us even realizing it. From the earliest days of our lives, we learn signals of what is considered right and wrong, acceptable and unacceptable. For instance, 
Think about how career choices are influenced. Many people feel immense pressure to pursue prestigious professions, perhaps in medicine or law, simply because these paths are upheld as markers of success. It's fascinating how deeply ingrained societal norms can dictate not just the paths we take, but how we feel about ourselves when we step off those paths. The desire to conform can lead to a sense of security, but it can also snuff out personal desires and creativity, forcing us into boxes we were never meant to fit inside. The internal dialogue wrestles between what is expected and what we genuinely want, revealing layers of complexity in our decision-making processes. Many find themselves at crossroads, grappling with the fear of judgment from peers and family against the yearning for self-expression. In contrast, resisting societal norms in pursuit of authenticity can be both a liberating and daunting endeavor. Think of the stories of those who have turned their backs on conventional narratives. For example, consider artists who drop standard lifestyle pursuits to follow their passions wholeheartedly, or professionals who transition to entrepreneurship because they refuse to accept the constraints of a traditional office job. These individuals often face skepticism and even hostility, yet they choose to listen to their inner voices rather than external pressures. Their journeys are filled with uncertainty, but in that uncertainty lies the freedom to shape one's identity away from societal expectations. A poignant example is the narrative of someone who decides not to marry at a certain age, despite family pressures, choosing instead to focus on personal growth and exploration. In doing so, they redefine success on their own terms, making choices that resonate with their values rather than those imposed by society. These stories inspire others, creating ripples of courage and authenticity that challenge the status quo. Ultimately, navigating the delicate balance between societal norms and personal ambition is a journey worth undertaking. Embracing the tension between what is expected of us and what we truly desire can lead to profound insights and life changes. One practical takeaway is to regularly check in with ourselves about the motivations behind our choices. Are they rooted in someone else's expectations or do they align with our personal goals and values? Taking a moment to reflect on our decisions can help illuminate the path of authenticity amidst the cacophony of societal pressure. Global Perspectives, How Culture Shapes Worldviews Understanding how different cultures perceive and interpret the world reveals the rich tapestry of human experience. Each culture brings its unique lens through which its members observe life. Imagine walking through a bustling market in Morocco, where the vibrant colors and lively sounds create an atmosphere filled with energy. Here, the act of haggling over prices is not just a transaction, but a dance of respect and relationship building. In contrast, in many Western societies, the focus may lean more towards efficiency and directness in shopping. These nuances reflect deeper cultural values. One embraces community and connection, while the other prioritizes individualism and speed. Such differences can shape everything, from communication styles to conflict resolution approaches, influencing how we connect and coexist with one another in the global fabric. Stories from travelers serve as a gateway into understanding the richness of diverse perspectives that color our world. Consider a traveler in Japan who marvels at the traditions of Hanami, the Cherry Blossom Festival. For this visitor, the fleeting beauty of the blossoms symbolizes the transience of life, a profound concept deeply rooted in Japanese culture. Each year, families gather under the blossoms, sharing laughter, food, and moments of contemplation. For the traveler, witnessing such reverence for nature offers a striking contrast to their own hurried lifestyle. Similarly, an encounter in Nigeria might showcase the communal spirit during a wedding where the entire village participates, celebrating not just the union of two individuals, but the harmony of a community. These personal anecdotes reveal how our travels can broaden our understanding, inviting us to learn from the lives of others and recognize the beauty in differing worldviews. Engaging with different cultures enriches our own lives, prompting reflection on our values and beliefs. When we approach the world with curiosity and openness, we not only gain insight into others, but also discover new layers of understanding within ourselves. A practical tip for fostering this perspective 
is to immerse yourself in activities that expose you to other cultures, whether attending local cultural festivals, exploring diverse neighborhoods, or engaging with international literature. These experiences can spark conversations and broaden your perspective, reminding us that while our worldviews may differ, they are all valuable threads in the wonderful tapestry of human experience. Chapter four, the science of consciousness, theories of consciousness explained. Humans have long been fascinated by consciousness, that elusive quality that allows us to experience life in rich, vivid detail. Throughout history, various theories have sought to explain how consciousness arises from the brain's intricate workings. One major theory is the biological theory, which suggests that consciousness is inherently tied to the physical processes in the brain. In this view, thoughts, emotions, and self-awareness are the results of neural activity. Then there's the integrated information theory, which proposes that consciousness correlates with the amount of information processed by the system. This theory intrigues many because it implies that consciousness could potentially exist in various forms beyond just humans. Another compelling perspective is the global workspace theory, which describes consciousness as a stage that brings together information from different brain areas into a unified experience. Each theory brings unique insights, and it's striking to see how they often overlap and interconnect, reflecting the complexity of our mental landscape. Reflecting on my own life, I recall moments of heightened awareness during simple, everyday activities, which have left lasting impressions. One such moment occurred while I was hiking in the mountains. Surrounded by towering trees and the sound of a gentle stream, I felt an overwhelming sense of presence. It was as if time slowed, and I suddenly became acutely aware of the sensations around me, the cool breeze on my skin, the chirping of birds, the earthy smell of nature. In that instant, everything felt intertwined, a beautiful blend of perception and thought. It's these moments that compel me to explore the depth of consciousness further. They make me ponder whether we truly tap into the vastness of consciousness in our daily lives or merely skim the surface. Each of us has our unique stories of such moments, little windows into the profound depths of our awareness. As we ponder these complex theories and our personal experiences of consciousness, it's essential to cultivate our awareness. Practicing mindfulness, for instance, can enhance our ability to be present, allowing us to experience those heightened moments more frequently. Whether it's through meditation, spending time in nature, or engaging deeply with a good book, we can all strive to deepen our connection with the world around us and within us. Altered states, dreams and dissonance. Dreams have long fascinated humanity, often seen as windows into our inner selves. They can be vivid and lifelike or abstract and nonsensical, toying with the edges of our understanding. When we drift into slumber, our consciousness unshackles itself from the constraints of reality, weaving narratives that can be as enlightening as they are perplexing. In those moments, we find pieces of ourselves, often hidden beneath layers of daily life. The significance of dreaming goes beyond mere entertainment of the mind. It serves as a bridge connecting the conscious and unconscious realms, allowing us to explore unexpressed fears, desires, and unresolved conflicts. These nocturnal adventures can reveal deeper truths about who we are, even guiding us toward personal breakthroughs that we might not achieve while awake. Many of us have experienced bizarre dreams that linger in our minds long after waking. Consider those moments when we find ourselves flying effortlessly above sprawling landscapes or conversing with long-lost friends, only to wake up and wonder what on earth it all meant. Often, these curious episodes challenge our rational thinking, plunging us into chaotic terrains where emotions reign supreme. We might dream of arriving late to an important meeting symbolizing anxiety about our waking life commitments. Alternatively, dreams of being chased can reflect feelings of insecurity or unresolved issues that we avoid facing. Understanding the intricacies of our dreams often requires introspection and a willingness to confront our subconscious messages. By sharing these surreal experiences, we not only validate our own feelings, but also find solace in knowing that others travel similar dreamscapes full of vivid imagery and strange encounters. Reflecting on my own encounters with dreams, 
there is one that stands out vividly in my memory. I found myself in an endless library, each book containing vivid versions of my life stories that had yet to come to fruition. The air buzzed with an electric tension, as if the very walls were alive with unspoken possibilities. Each time I reached for a book, it would dissolve into shimmering light, evading my grasp, leaving me with a potent mix of hope and frustration. This dream lingered with me, prompting a period of reflection in my waking life about my aspirations and the paths I chose. It highlighted a deep-seated desire to explore the unknown, pushing me to step outside the boundaries I had erected. Dreams, indeed, have the profound capacity to urge us to confront our realities, even when cloaked in dissonance. An effective way to honor these nocturnal nuggets of wisdom is to keep a dream journal, capturing these moments as they come to light. Writing down dreams offers clarity, allowing us to sift through the surreal landscape of our subconscious with intent. The Brain's Role in Self-Awareness the brain's role in self-awareness is a captivating journey through a network of neurons that orchestrate our conscious experiences. It starts with the prefrontal cortex, that gray matter just behind our foreheads, which acts as the maestro in our concert of thoughts and emotions. This area allows us to reflect on our thoughts, recognize our emotions, and even anticipate how others might perceive us. When I first learned about this, it struck me how often we underestimate the profound complexity behind something as seemingly simple as knowing ourselves. Imagine a theater where your mind is both the actor and the audience, constantly analyzing and re-evaluating each performance. This self-reflective capability isn't just a trait, it's a fundamental aspect of our humanity that exists because of intricate developments in our brain's evolution. The amygdala and the insula also play crucial roles in our self-awareness. The amygdala, often dubbed the emotional center, is where our feelings are processed. It's like an alarm system, alerting us to emotional states that may require our attention. Meanwhile, the insula helps us connect the dots between our internal feelings and external world. It is fascinating to think about how these regions work together, crafting a holistic picture of who we are which drives our decision-making and even influences our behavior. These components form a sanctuary where we navigate the ebb and flow of life, highlighting how our brains are not just organs, but dynamic societies of thought and emotion. Recent neuroscience research suggests that self-awareness also involves the default mode network, a collection of brain regions that activate when we're at rest, lost in thought, or daydreaming. It is in these quiet moments that we often find ourselves traversing our memories, imagining futures, and pondering our identity, a sort of mental retreat that allows the mind to wander and wonder about itself. This network supports the idea that self-awareness isn't a constant state, but rather a fluid experience, one that ebbs and flows with our daily activities and emotional states. Such findings illuminate the fact that understanding oneself is as much an active pursuit as it is a passive reflection. Your journey towards self-awareness reflects not only personal milestones, but also a broader human narrative. Remember the first time you looked in the mirror and felt the weight of your own gaze? That moment, so trivial yet profound, is akin to the evolutionary moments that many of our ancestors experienced. Historically, self-awareness offered evolutionary advantages, shaping how individuals interacted within their tribes, it was essential for cooperation, communication, and social bonding. In my own life, I can recall distinct moments, some joyful, others heart-wrenching, that demanded a priority shift, igniting a deeper understanding of who I was at my core. The early experiences of self-awareness often stem from our interactions with others. Like a child discovering that they can influence their environment, I recall a pivotal moment when a teacher praised my work and I realized for the first time that my efforts could spark joy in others. That interaction raised innumerable questions. What does this mean about me? How do I relate to my peers? Each question pushed me deeper into introspection, prompting a growing awareness of how I fit into the tapestry of those around me. Life events act as catalysts for self-reflection and awareness. The loss of a loved one, for instance, can halt you in your tracks forcing you to confront your beliefs and emotions. That was the case for me during a particularly trying time when I lost someone dear. 
the immediate grief morphed into an exploration of life, purpose, and identity. I found myself asking, what does it mean to be myself in this new narrative? Such upheavals not only transform our understanding of ourselves, but also reveal how complex and beautifully intricate our self-awareness is. Every chapter of our lives contributes to the broader story of who we are. We adapt, we learn, and even amid the chaos of life's whirlwind, we manage to glimpse at our true selves buried beneath layers of experience, forming connections that span beyond the superficial. Recognizing self-awareness as a journey invites a valuable perspective. It is not merely a destination, but a lifelong exploration that can often start with simple acts of reflection and the courage to question our own narratives. Reflecting on these moments can uncover significant insights about what shapes our self-identity, offering a reminder to pause and engage with ourselves in genuine ways. Chapter 5. Memory. The Bedrock of Identity. How Memories Are Formed. Memory formation is a complex and fascinating process that begins in our brains the moment we experience something. At its core, memory formation involves a series of neurological events that transform fleeting impressions into lasting recollections. It operates through three main stages, encoding, storage, and retrieval. During encoding, sensory information is perceived and transformed into a format that can be stored. This transformation involves the activation of neurons and synapses linking them together in networks. As we process our experiences, the brain also assigns emotional weight to them. This emotional tagging is what often helps the most vivid memories stick with us over time, creating neural pathways that become reinforced with each recollection. Consider the memory of your first day at a new job. As you walk through the doors, the scent of fresh coffee mingled with the crispness of new carpet and your heart raced with a mixture of excitement and anxiety. The moment you introduced yourself to your colleagues, a flurry of names and faces flooded your mind, but one thing stood out, the warmth of a specific smile. That smile became a pivotal element of your memory, spurring your brain to encode not just the event itself, but the feelings connected to it. In future reminiscences, that smile might evoke those same invigorating emotions, illustrating how interconnected our memories and emotions are. Studies using functional MRI have shown that different regions of the brain activate during these processes, allowing researchers to visualize memory formation as if they are observing a story being written in real time. Anecdotes about significant life events can offer deeper insights into how memories imprint on our minds. Imagine an elderly gentleman recalling his wedding day several decades prior. The details may be clouded with time, yet he may vividly remember the way his bride's laughter filled the air and the nervous butterflies that danced in his stomach during the vows. Such recollections reveal not just the event, but the myriad emotions tied to it, painted with the brushstrokes of nostalgia and love. Neuroscientific recordings from such moments can capture these emotional highs, demonstrating how moments truly defining in our lives are etched into the fabric of our being. When you think of your cherished memories, consider jotting them down, allowing the feelings and details to resurface, thereby enhancing the network of recall each time you revisit those special instances. It can be a powerful tool for comprehension, not only of your past, but also of who you are now. The fallibility of recollection. Our memories, while seemingly reliable, can often be surprisingly distorted. The brain acts like a vast library where books are not always shelved correctly. Sometimes, events blend together or fade into shadows, and what we think we remember is heavily influenced by our emotions, beliefs, and even the passing of time. It's fascinating yet unsettling to realize that our recollections are not perfect replicas of the past, but rather intricate reconstructions that can deceive us. For example, you might recall a cherished childhood vacation and feel certain of the details the vibrant colors of the sunset, the laughter of loved ones. But isn't it curious how those memories might shift with each telling? As time passes, certain elements shift, influenced by new experiences or even discussions with others. This phenomenon has been studied extensively, revealing that memories can be altered by mere suggestion or the way a story is recounted. Our brains have a built-in bias towards narrative, leading us to tweak and edit recollections unknowingly. 
personal stories showcase this curious aspect of memory. I once vividly remembered a summer spent at my grandparents' house filled with backyard barbecues and games of catch. Yet, during a family gathering, I learned that the barbecue I so fondly remembered had, inconveniently, never taken place. My grandmother's laughter echoed in my ears, accompanied by the aroma of her famous lemon cake, which had somehow become intertwined with moments that were never real. This revelation left me feeling disoriented, as if part of my childhood had been pulled out from under me. Yet, it also illustrated a deeper truth. Memory is a living entity, one that grows and changes just like we do. These glitches, while startling, are a part of the human experience. They remind us that our stories, both personal and collective, are not set in stone. They evolve. Every time we share an anecdote, we inch a bit closer to the truth, or perhaps further from it. The important takeaway is to approach your memories with a gentle curiosity. Instead of clinging tightly to them as definitive truths, consider them as colored sketches of your past, open to interpretation and change. Embracing this fluidity can not only ease the discomfort of discovering memory flaws, but also allow for deeper connections with those around you. Sharing memories with friends or family can be a delightful journey of discovery revealing different perspectives and hidden stories that enrich our understanding of one another. The next time you reflect on a significant moment, pause and ask yourself, what if this memory hasn't remained entirely intact? Exploring that uncertainty might lead to a richer tapestry of recollections woven together by shared experiences and the attentive listening that makes memory a collective process rather than a solo venture. Preserving memories, techniques and technologies Memory is a fascinating gift we all possess, yet it can be as slippery as a wet bar of soap. To enhance memory retention and recall, one must become a student of their own mind. Techniques such as visualization can be remarkably effective. When you need to remember something, picture it vividly in your mind's eye. Imagine the colors, the sounds, even the smells. This deep engagement of the senses makes the memory more vibrant and easier to recall later. Additionally, storytelling is a powerful tool. When you weave facts or events into a narrative, your brain appreciates the structure, enabling better retention. Think back to school. Didn't the lessons that came alive through stories stick with you longer? Practice also plays a crucial role. The more you review or engage with information, the stronger those neural pathways become. Even something as simple as repeating a name three times after meeting someone can make a lasting impression. And let's not overlook the importance of emotion. When a moment makes you feel something profound, it etches itself into your memory like a permanent ink stain on paper. The role of technology in preserving and sharing our memories has transformed dramatically. Gadgets we carry in our pockets now contain an entire gallery of life snapshots and social media allows us to share those moments globally with just a click. Think about it. How many times have you taken a photo, not just to cherish a memory, but to share it instantly? These platforms have created a cultural tapestry of shared experiences that can connect us, even across distances. However, it's essential to navigate this digital landscape mindfully. Digital storage can be thought of as a modern-day time capsule, but it requires regular maintenance. Backing up photos and videos, for instance, ensures that these precious memories aren't lost to the whims of technology. Digital diaries and apps that encourage journaling can help us articulate our thoughts and feelings, enhancing both memory and clarity about our experiences. In this era of fleeting moments, technology provides a means to hold on to memories while simultaneously inviting us to reflect on them in ways that the past never allowed. We now have the tools to not only capture our lives, but also to share them with a broader audience creating a legacy of memories that can be revisited and cherished for generations to come. As you navigate through life's joys and sorrows, remember to balance your memories captured in digital formats with tangible ones that engage all your senses. Take the time to write down your thoughts, gather physical tokens of your experiences, or simply talk about your past with loved ones. They can help anchor those fleeting moments in time. Practicing these methods can deepen your connection with the past while enriching your present. Chapter 6 The Power of Language in Thought 
language as a cognitive tool. Language is more than just a means of communication. It's a framework through which we structure our thoughts and perceptions. Think about how we often struggle to articulate complex ideas when we lack the right words. This struggle isn't merely a lapse in vocabulary. It highlights the profound relationship between language and thought. Cognitive scientists suggest that the very way we process the world is influenced by the languages we speak. For instance, when I transitioned from speaking primarily English to learning Spanish, I noticed a shift in how I perceived time. In English, we often refer to the future as ahead of us and the past as behind. However, in Spanish, the terms used can create a different experience of time, which, in turn, affected how I anticipated future events. The vocabulary and structure we use not only helps us to think, but can even shape the decisions we make, revealing how language acts as a cognitive framework shaping our reality. Moreover, language plays a crucial role in enhancing the clarity of ideas. When I was writing my first book, I struggled with articulating my main points clearly. It wasn't until I focused on my word choice and how I structured my sentences that the clutter began to fall away. For example, if I were to describe emotions like joy or fear using precise adjectives and imagery, it painted a much clearer picture than broad, vague terms. Instead of saying, I felt happy, I might say, a warm glow spread through my chest as laughter bubbled up inside me. This kind of detail not only conveys my feelings more vividly, but also invites the reader into my experience. Language allows us to carve out clarity from confusion, offering a precise lens through which we can view our ideas, leading to a richer understanding for both the speaker and the audience. As we explore this dynamic relationship between language and thought, it's clear that we can use language intentionally to foster deeper connections and insights. One practical tip is to embrace the practice of journaling or reflective writing. By writing down your thoughts, you engage a dialogue with yourself, enabling you to refine ideas that may seem nebulous at first. This process is akin to sculpting. You chip away at rough edges until your thoughts become clear and defined. When you express your ideas through writing, you deepen your understanding and in turn, enrich your conversations with others. Remember, clarity in language can lead to clarity in thought, transforming ideas into powerful tools for connection and understanding. The Sapir-Whorf Hypothesis, Thinking in Language. The Sapir-Whorf Hypothesis, often framed as the idea that language shapes thought, invites us to consider how our native tongues influence not merely our communication, but the very way we perceive and interact with the world around us. Imagine a world where color is felt not just as an abstract idea, but as something visceral, experienced differently depending on the language one speaks. For instance, many languages have specific words for shades that English groups under a simple category. Take the Russian language, which includes the terms goluboy for light blue and sini for dark blue. Speakers of Russian can often distinguish between these two colors more readily than English speakers can manage with blue. This linguistic precision shapes not just how they talk about colors, but also how they experience them. The idea that our thoughts are tied to our language suggests that learning a new language might not just broaden our vocabulary, but could potentially alter our cognitive patterns, allowing for new ways of understanding reality. Reflecting on my own life, I recall my experiences learning Spanish. Initially, I approached it from a mathematical standpoint, focusing on grammar and vocabulary in isolation. But as I began to think in Spanish, an unexpected transformation occurred. Suddenly, the world opened up in vibrant new ways. The Spanish language's emphasis on vivid and emotive expression made me more attuned to the nuances of everyday life. I found myself appreciating not just the words, but the feelings and cultural contexts that accompanied them. For example, the word sobra mesa encapsulates the tradition of lingering at the table after a meal, enjoying conversation and connection, a beautiful notion that felt foreign to me in my English-speaking experiences. This influence on my perception extended into my interactions and relationships, where I became more aware of the social dynamics and cultural implications that previously went unnoticed. This fusion of language and thought reveals an intimate connection that runs deeper than mere vocabulary.
It underscores a profound insight about human experience. Our understanding is filtered through our linguistic capabilities. This isn't just a theoretical exercise. It has real-world implications. Consider how expressing gratitude differs across cultures. In some languages, saying thank you is woven into daily ritual, while in others, it might feel less emphasized. How does that influence relationships? What does it mean when a society lacks a term for expressing thanks? The ramifications are significant, suggesting that cultivating an awareness of language can help us navigate different perspectives. A practical takeaway is to immerse yourself in the languages or dialects that interest you, not just to become fluent, but to challenge your existing worldview. By doing so, it opens a door to a richer understanding of life itself, a passport to perceptions not once considered. The evolution of language and its impact on thought. Tracing the development of language through human history reveals an intricate tapestry woven from the threads of culture, necessity, and innovation. From the rudimentary sounds and gestures used by our prehistoric ancestors to the complex tongues we speak today, language has undergone tremendous transformations. Imagine early humans trying to communicate around a fire, using rudimentary sounds and pantomimes to convey urgency and emotion. Each grunt and motion slowly began to evolve, gradually building a system that allowed for more nuanced interaction. The development of language was not merely about sounds. It was a crucial tool for forming social bonds, coordinating hunts, and sharing knowledge across generations. As societies grew, so did their need for more sophisticated means of communication. Written language emerged as a game changer, allowing thoughts and ideas to be preserved, debated, and shared far beyond the lifetime of any individual, bridging distances and cultures. This evolution is not just a linguistic journey, it's a reflection of our cognitive development. With each leap in language complexity, there were corresponding advancements in abstract thought and reasoning. Language became a mirror of our evolving minds, enabling us to focus on not just the world around us, but on our inner thoughts and philosophies. The interplay between language evolution and cognitive advancements is a fascinating relationship that continues to unfold. As humans developed more sophisticated languages, our cognitive faculties expanded in tandem. This mutual growth has led to profound shifts in how we understand and interact with the world. Take the concept of time. Languages that have a rich vocabulary for time allow speakers to think about the future and past in intricate ways, influencing their behavior and decision-making. This is evident when considering how some cultures view time linearly, while others see it as cyclical. Such differences in linguistic structure can foster unique perspectives on everything from personal ambition to community values. Moreover, we can't overlook the role of metaphor in shaping human thought. Metaphors, which flourish in rich languages, provide frameworks for us to comprehend complex ideas. When we speak of climbing the corporate ladder or navigating a relationship, we're using metaphors that influence how we visualize and approach these facets of our lives. This exploration of language intricately illustrates the power of words in shaping our experiences and thought processes. To better appreciate language's impact on thought, consider the everyday language around us. The terms we use, the phrases we adopt, and even the idioms we share shape not just our communication, but our perceptions and interactions with the world. When we attach a word to an emotion, or when we label our experiences, we're creating a framework for understanding them. This is observable in various contexts, from how we engage in conversations to how we interpret the news. The power of language also emphasizes the responsibility that comes with it. The words we choose can uplift or diminish, clarify or confuse. Therefore, recognizing the weight of language in shaping thought can lead to more intentional communication, enriching our lives and those of others. Engaging with language in this way encourages us to be mindful, opening the door to richer connections and deeper insights into both ourselves and the myriad cultures around us. Chapter 7. The Role of Imagination Creativity, the Heart of Human Thought Creativity is often perceived as the spark that ignites new ideas, yet it is so much more than just an artistic endeavor. It is the very engine of human thought, driving innovation and problem-solving across all aspects of life. At its core, 
Creativity is the ability to see connections between seemingly unrelated things, to think outside the lines drawn by conventional wisdom. Imagine a painter mixing colors to create a new shade, or a scientist experimenting with hypotheses in pursuit of a breakthrough. In both instances, creativity transcends mere functionality. It is about envisioning possibilities and transforming them into reality. Consider how creativity plays a role in everyday life, from cooking a meal without a recipe to finding an efficient way to manage time. It prompts us to question the status quo, pushing the boundaries of what we believe we can achieve. It energizes discussions and invites collaboration, allowing people from diverse backgrounds to come together and generate fresh ideas. Many might think of creativity as the exclusive domain of artists and inventors, yet every person benefits from using creative thought to tackle challenges and enhance their experiences. Throughout history, there have been countless instances where creativity has sparked significant change. Take, for instance, the story of the invention of the wheel. This simple yet revolutionary idea transformed transportation and agriculture, ultimately shaping the course of human civilization. Similarly, when Thomas Edison developed the electric light bulb, he didn't merely create a tool, he illuminated the world and fundamentally changed the way humans lived and worked. Each instance reflects how creative thinking can reroute societal norms and redefine our existence. As you move through your daily routines, remember that creativity isn't just reserved for grand inventions or artistic expressions. It exists in every decision you make and every problem you encounter. Embracing your own creative potential can lead to personal changes and innovations in your own life. So next time you face a challenge, consider looking at it through a creative lens. Ask yourself, what new approach can I take? What connections haven't I made yet? By thinking like a creator, you might just unlock solutions that are waiting for you to discover. Imagination versus reality, a delicate balance. Imagination often dances on the edges of possibility, forging paths through landscapes of dreams that can seem far removed from the realities we live in. This tension is palpable, especially when we consider the creative impulses that spark revolutions in thought. For instance, think of artists, writers, or inventors, individuals who dare to imagine something radically different. Their visions can sometimes feel like whispers of a distant reality, starkly contrasting with the everyday struggles and mundane routines most of us experience. I remember sitting in a cramped apartment, the walls closing in, feeling like the dreams I had were impossible. Yet, even in that small space, ideas would swirl like leaves in a brisk wind, reminding me that imagination has no bounds. But the question lingers, does this imagination serve as a refuge or as a daily frustration when reality binds us? This relationship between imagination and reality can often lead to discomfort. The disparity between a vibrant creative mind and the restrictive nature of our circumstances can lead to feelings of inadequacy or despair. I recall speaking with a friend, a talented writer, who found herself stifled by her nine to five job, each tick of the clock echoing the pages she longed to fill. Her imagination painted beautiful worlds, yet the realities of deadlines, bills, and responsibilities held her back. This interplay reveals something profound about our human experience. While reality may sometimes seem like an unyielding giant, our imagination remains a nimble spark that can illuminate the darkest corners of existence. Navigating this delicate balance requires acknowledging both sides and understanding what pushes us forward, while also grounding ourselves in the present. While imagination often identifies the gaps between what is and what could be, it also possesses a powerful alchemy that can reshape our realities. When we nurture our imaginative sides, we start to see potential everywhere. Consider the individuals who have transformed their realities through sheer will fueled by creativity. I once met a young architect whose designs were more poetic than practical. His ideas were audacious, merging nature with modernity in a way that seemed otherworldly. When he shared his vision, I was struck not just by the aesthetic beauty, but by the way he envisioned community and sustainability. Reality can be a canvas. Through imaginative thinking, many have painted vibrant murals that spark change, even in the midst of adversity. Fostering imagination in everyday life. 
Imagination thrives best in an environment that is rich with stimulation and curiosity. One simple yet effective way to nurture creativity daily is by incorporating small rituals that engage the senses and prompt playful thinking. Start each day with a brief moment of mindfulness, perhaps sipping your morning coffee while observing the world outside, taking note of all the details you usually overlook. By allowing your mind to wander, you can uncover new connections and ideas that flit just beyond your usual scope. Creating space for creativity also involves embracing playfulness. It doesn't have to be confined to children's activities. Adults can find joy in coloring books, puzzles, or even building something with their hands. Doodling can unleash thoughts that are trapped in the rigidity of adult life. Another practical tip is to set aside a few minutes daily to write freely. Journaling without restrictions encourages thoughts to flow and can serve as a scrimshaw for imaginative ideas that might spark new projects. Inviting friends over for a brainstorming brunch can allow for collaborative creativity, turning the dread of brainstorms into a more relaxed and fun gathering. Reflecting on personal experiences, I remember a time when I felt my creativity waning, lost in the monotony of routine. To rekindle my imaginative spirit, I committed to exploring new hobbies. Taking dance classes opened up a world of rhythm and expression that reignited not just my imagination but also my enthusiasm for life. Each step was a chance to invent my own patterns, transforming structured learning into a canvas for personal expression. This practice taught me that moving beyond mental boundaries, physically or intellectually, can lead to surprising sources of inspiration. Additionally, I cultivate a habit of reading broadly. Each book I dive into is like a portal to another realm, filled with experiences and viewpoints I might not encounter in my regular life. Those narratives often trigger my own memories or aspirations, weaving new threads of thought into the tapestry of my imagination. Even cultivating relationships with people from diverse backgrounds can enrich one's mental landscape. Conversations steeped in different cultures and experiences expand your horizon, offering a treasure trove of ideas to draw upon. Maintaining a curious mindset where questioning and exploration are prioritized is a practice that continually fuels my creative thinking. Embracing the unexpected can act as a final layer to this rich tapestry. Sometimes, spontaneity opens doors to creative vistas that schedules and plans could never provide. Whether it's altering your route to work, trying a new cuisine, or picking up an abandoned hobby, these deviations from routine can serve as the sparks that ignite innovation. Allowing space for these moments of spontaneity can tremendously enhance one's imaginative capability. Always be ready to catch those fleeting moments of inspiration and let your curiosity guide you. Chapter 8. Emotional Intelligence. Connecting the Dots. Understanding Emotional Awareness. Emotional intelligence is a cornerstone of personal development, referring to our ability to perceive, understand, and manage our own emotions while recognizing and influencing the emotions of others. It's more than just being aware of feelings. It involves using that awareness to navigate social complexities, make informed decisions, and handle relationships judiciously and empathetically. In a world where personal and professional relationships are increasingly complex, the benefits of emotional intelligence are palpable. It enhances our communication skills, fosters better teamwork, and cultivates resilience, which allows us to cope better with stress and adversity. Consider the last time you felt frustrated or overwhelmed. Were you able to articulate those feelings? Recognizing what triggers these emotions in ourselves can lead to profound insights. Perhaps you found that addressing your feelings rather than suppressing them not only alleviated your immediate distress, but also improved your relationships. When we improve our emotional awareness, we allow ourselves to respond rather than react, hence creating healthier interactions. This groundwork leads to personal growth, empowers us to pursue goals with clarity, and ultimately enriches our overall quality of life. Moments of emotional awakening often serve as transformative experiences that alter the way we perceive ourselves and the world around us. There may be a specific event that stands out in your memory when something shifted within you. For many, this could be related to loss, love, or even an everyday encounter that unexpectedly stirred deep feelings. 
I remember a conversation with an old friend during a rough patch in my life. As we shared our struggles, I realized that vulnerability was not a weakness, but a bridge to deeper connection. This awareness made me open up more authentically to those around me, fostering richer relationships and a stronger support network. The impact of emotions on choices. Emotions significantly influence our decision-making processes in ways that often go unnoticed. When faced with choices, we might think we rely solely on logic and rationality, but in truth, our feelings play a crucial role. Have you ever made a decision in the heat of the moment only to regret it later? That's the power of emotions at work. From joyous excitement to debilitating fear, emotions can skew our judgment or provide clarity, depending on the context. The intricate relationship between emotions and choices reminds us that we are not just rational thinkers, but also deeply emotional beings. Our feelings can illuminate the path before us, guiding us toward what we truly desire, or they can cloud our vision, leading to impulsive decisions that we might not have made had we been in a calmer state of mind. When we encounter stress or anxiety, for instance, we may succumb to quick fixes that offer immediate relief but lack long-term benefits. Real-life examples vividly illustrate how emotions drive our choices. Consider a job seeker who is thrilled about a dream position. Overcome by excitement, they might overlook crucial details like company culture or job demands that do not align with their values, only to find themselves unhappy after a few months. Conversely, a person paralyzed by fear of failure might shy away from applying for a position that could change their life missing out on opportunities because they let anxiety dictate their actions. These narratives are prevalent, weaving through various aspects of life, from the relationships we foster to the products we choose to buy. Emotional moments, like the rush of falling in love or the sting of heartbreak, can swiftly shape our decisions, sometimes with profound consequences. Reflecting on these stories can reveal the layers of human experience where emotions serve as both guiding lights and stumbling blocks. As you navigate your own life, remember to take a pause and reflect on the emotional currents influencing your choices. When faced with a decision, consider how you feel about the options available. Are those feelings genuine or are they colored by the moment? Sometimes, taking a step back to assess your emotional state can lead to more thoughtful, informed decision-making. Embracing this introspective approach can help you harness the power of your emotions, turning potentially turbulent waters into a clearer stream of insightful choices. Cultivating emotional intelligence in relationships. Improving emotional intelligence is a journey that can transform the way we connect with others. It begins with self-awareness, which means recognizing our own emotions and understanding how they affect our actions and interactions. For example, Take a moment next time you feel a strong emotion, like anger or anxiety, and ask yourself what specifically triggered those feelings. This act of reflection isn't just about the immediate emotion, it's also about understanding the underlying beliefs or experiences that shape how you respond to situations. Once we can identify our emotions, we can manage them better, especially in tense situations where calmness can steer us towards resolution rather than conflict. Another vital technique is to practice empathy. Try to genuinely put yourself in someone else's shoes. This can be particularly enlightening in conversations where there's a disagreement. When we listen actively, we not only hear the words being said, but also pick up on the emotions behind those words. For instance, in a recent conversation with a friend who was upset about work, I made a conscious effort to listen without interrupting or planning my response while she spoke. This allowed me to not just understand her problem, but also to sense the fear and frustration she felt. Such an experience underlined for me the importance of understanding the emotional context of conversations and how it can deepen relationships. Reflecting on my own journey with emotional intelligence, I remember a time when misunderstandings ballooned due to a lack of awareness. Early in my career, I had a colleague who often seemed distant, my initial reaction was to take it personally, believing that they didn't like me or valued my contributions. It took a series of emotionally charged exchanges to realize that their reticence was rooted in their own struggles, which had little to do with me. Once I recognized this, 
I made a point to check in with them, showing genuine concern. This bridged a gap I didn't even know existed, allowing us to build a solid working relationship. Through this process, I learned that emotional intelligence isn't just beneficial, it's essential for cultivating deep, meaningful connections. In another instance, while I was navigating a difficult family situation, emotional awareness proved to be my anchor. I found myself caught in a cycle of blame during a family dispute. But instead of letting my frustration escalate, I decided to express my feelings openly. Instead of saying, you always make me feel this way, I shifted my approach to, I feel hurt when this happens. This small change in language altered the dynamic entirely, creating a space for open dialogue rather than defensive reactions. Sharing my feelings helped the others involved open up about their emotions too, enhancing our understanding of each other and reinforcing the bond we shared. These experiences taught me the incredible power of emotional intelligence in transforming conflict into connection, fostering an atmosphere where understanding prevails over discord. As we navigate our lives and relationships, it's crucial to remember that enhancing our emotional intelligence is a practice, much like honing a skill. Even small acts of emotional awareness can lead to profound connections. Next time you find yourself in a tense situation, take a breath, acknowledge your feelings, and consider what might be driving those feelings in others. This approach can not only diffuse potential conflicts, but also enrich your relationships in ways you might never have anticipated. Embracing emotional intelligence is not merely beneficial, it's a pathway to genuine connection with the people around us. Chapter 9. The Interplay of Logic and Emotion Balancing Rationality and Emotion in Decision-Making Balancing rationality and emotion in decision-making is a nuanced art that deeply influences our everyday choices. The mind often fires up with the cold logic of analytics, while the heart pulses with the warmth of feelings and instincts. Understanding how to harmonize these two forces can lead to richer, more satisfying outcomes. When you face a decision, it's easy to tip the scale in favor of one over the other. But when you allow both logic and emotion to speak, you can create a dialogue that might reveal insights you wouldn't recognize on your own. Think about a time when you made a decision purely from your head or your heart. How did the aftermath resonate with you? Was it fulfilling? Sometimes logic may point towards a more practical choice, but if your heart isn't in it, can you truly call it a win? This doesn't mean disregarding data. Rather, it's about interpreting numbers through the lens of human experience. Exploring our personal narratives brings these principles to life. Picture a major life decision, perhaps a career change or a relationship crossroads. In these moments, individuals often wrestle with logical reasoning and emotional pull. A vivid example comes to mind, a friend who was contemplating a job offer that promised a significant salary increase but required moving to a place she had no emotional ties to. Logically, it seemed like a leap forward, but emotionally, she felt anchored in her current home with family and friends. After deliberation, she visited the new city, exploring not just the job, but also the culture and community. That blend of evaluation lent her decision a clarity that pure logic or emotion alone lacked. She ultimately chose to stay close to her roots, finding a job opportunity locally that felt more aligned with her values. By including emotion in the decision process, she not only honored her feelings, but also made a logically sound decision that led to greater happiness. A practical takeaway from these reflections is to cultivate a habit of pausing and checking in with both your mind and heart when confronted with decisions. Ask yourself how the decision aligns with your core values and emotional state. You might even find it helpful to write down the pros and cons filtered through both lenses. What does logic say? And what does your intuition or emotional side express? This simple practice can provide a more comprehensive view of your situation and guide you toward a decision that satisfies both your rational side and your heartfelt desires. Cognitive dissonance, when logic meets emotion. Cognitive dissonance is a fascinating psychological phenomenon that shows how our thoughts, beliefs, and emotions often engage in a dance, sometimes clashing in ways that leave us uneasy. Picture this. You've just purchased an expensive gadget that's widely praised. 
A week later, you stumble upon a flood of negative reviews from users highlighting significant flaws. Suddenly, your mind is juggling two conflicting ideas, the enjoyment of your new purchase and the nagging feeling that you may have made a bad decision. This inner turmoil manifests as cognitive dissonance, where the clash between logic and emotion can be disorienting. The effects of cognitive dissonance extend deeply into our thought processes, causing us to engage in mental gymnastics to restore harmony. Often, we find ourselves rationalizing our actions to align with our beliefs. In this example, you might convince yourself that the negative reviews are exaggerated or that your personal experience simply offers a better perspective. This rationalization allows you to eliminate the discomfort of holding contradictory thoughts, which can be unsettling. Cognitive dissonance doesn't only affect our decisions, but also shapes our identity, driving us to conform to the narratives we build around ourselves. The next time you find yourself in the midst of conflicting thoughts, try to lean into that discomfort rather than shy away from it. Ask yourself probing questions about your values and motivations, and don't hesitate to seek support from trusted friends or mentors who can provide perspective during challenging times. Practical Applications of Logic in Daily Life Every day, we face myriad problems that demand attention and resolution. Applying logical thinking in these situations can transform how we navigate challenges, turning confusion into clarity. One effective strategy involves breaking down complex issues into smaller, more manageable parts. For instance, when facing a decision about changing jobs, instead of overwhelming yourself with the whole scenario, start by jotting down the pros and cons of your current position versus the new opportunity. This technique of compartmentalizing allows you to see each factor more clearly, enabling you to weigh them against each other systematically. It's like looking through a telescope. Focusing on the key details helps to eliminate the noise surrounding the decision. Another approach is to apply the if-then framework. This perspective encourages you to consider the potential consequences of your actions before embarking on them. Imagine planning a family gathering. Instead of simply sending out invites, ask yourself, if I invite them, then how will it impact my budget? By foreseeing possible outcomes, you minimize surprises down the line and can prepare adequately. This preemptive thinking can also be beneficial in day-to-day -day interactions. When confronted with a heated discussion, employing logic enables you to ask, if I respond with anger, then what will happen? This line of questioning often leads to calmer responses and productive dialogues. Real-world examples abound where logical thinking shines through and brings about effective solutions. Consider a story from my friend Sarah, who faced a dilemma during her studies. She juggled multiple projects with overlapping deadlines and stress quickly mounted. Instead of allowing anxiety to cloud her judgment, she recalled the logical approach of prioritization. By assessing the urgency and significance of each project, she sorted them into a deadline-driven hierarchy. This clarity not only alleviated her stress, but also propelled her towards completing each task more efficiently. The result? A well-deserved honor in her course that underscored the efficacy of logical thinking in academic life. When faced with decisions or challenges, try thinking in terms of logical frameworks or structured breakdowns. This method can clarify what might seem insurmountable and guide you toward effective solutions, no matter how trivial or daunting the issue may appear. Chapter 10. The Influence of Technology on Thought The Digital Age, Thoughts in a Virtual Space The digital age has brought about a significant transformation in the way we think, process information, and interact with the world. Our brains, once unacquainted with constant stimuli, now find themselves bombarded with notifications, alerts, and a never-ending stream of content. This has led to shorter attention spans, where focusing on a single task for an extended period feels like a Herculean effort. Each ping of the phone or buzz of an incoming email becomes a tempting distraction, pulling our thoughts away from what we were concentrating on. It's as if our minds are caught in a spider web of digital threads, each one vying for our attention. The challenge lies in learning to navigate this space without losing sight of our own thoughts. Moreover, the way we construct our thoughts is deeply influenced by the digital narrative woven into our lives. 
With an abundance of information at our fingertips, it's easy to fall into the trap of surface-level engagement. Scrolling through articles instead of reading them in depth leads to a fragmented understanding of the world and of ourselves. The immediacy of information can create an illusion of knowledge, like a Hollywood set that looks grand from the front but is merely a facade. As we rely on summaries, tweets, and headlines, we risk losing the depth of critical thinking and reflection that allows us to form our own informed opinions. Sharing stories in the online world can also shape our understanding of self. Many times, I've found myself penning down thoughts on platforms that encourage reflection. I recall an instance when I posted a vulnerable piece about my struggles with imposter syndrome. What followed was a flood of responses, a reminder that even in the virtual space, there exists community and empathy. It harkened back to the age-old notion of shared experiences, allowing us to connect on an emotional level despite the technological barrier. Engaging with others, whether through comments or private messages, often leads to revelations about my own beliefs and values, reshaping my thoughts and guiding me toward deeper introspection. Finding a balance in this digital landscape is crucial. It often involves setting boundaries, recognizing when virtual engagement begins to overshadow real-life connections. Mindfulness in our online interactions can help us remain grounded, ensuring that we consume content that enriches us rather than consumes us. Perhaps a practical tip is to dedicate a portion of each day to disconnect from the digital realm, allowing your thoughts the space to breathe and evolve away from the screen's glow. How social media shapes opinions. Social media has transformed the way we express and develop our opinions, becoming a modern day agora where ideas clash and meld. Every scroll through platforms like Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram exposes us to a myriad of perspectives. It's fascinating how a single tweet or post can ignite a firestorm of reactions, shaping not just individual thoughts, but collective consciousness. The act of liking, sharing, or commenting creates a feedback loop, reinforcing beliefs and often pushing users deeper into their preconceived notions. In this digital landscape, everyone is both a contributor and a consumer of content, molding their identity based on the narratives that resonate with them. Our online personas are often curated versions of ourselves, reflecting the opinions we champion and the communities we engage with. As users navigate these spaces, they not only represent themselves, but also a digital avatar shaped by the complexities of discussions happening all around. Have you ever felt like you were shouting into the void only to discover your thoughts were precisely echoed back to you? This is the reality for many in today's world, where social media has given rise to echo chambers. These online environments are breeding grounds for homogeneity, where dissenting opinions are often drowned out by the chorus of agreement. Take a moment to reflect on how easily one can fall into the trap of following only like-minded individuals or groups. It's a comforting place, but it can dangerously limit exposure to alternative viewpoints. Many individuals have shared experiences of being stunned by the sheer number of people who think exactly as they do, especially during significant political events or social movements. Such instances highlight a gripping truth. The more one thinks they are part of a diverse dialogue, the more isolated they can become in a bubble of shared beliefs. The implications are profound. As we harden our opinions, we risk alienating ourselves from valuable discussions, leaving little room for empathy, understanding, or growth. For anyone navigating the complexities of social media, a practical tip is to intentionally diversify your feed. Seek out sources that challenge your beliefs and introduce you to new ideas. Engage with content that forces you to think beyond your usual boundaries. Not only will this broaden your perspective, but it may also enrich your conversations and deepen your understanding of others, a vital skill in our increasingly polarized world. The future of human thought in a tech-driven world. Predicting how technology will reshape cognitive processes in the future invites both excitement and a touch of apprehension. As we stand on the threshold of advancements that seemed fictional just a decade ago, it becomes apparent that our minds are both the canvas and the gallery for this evolution. Imagine a world where artificial intelligence collaborates seamlessly with human thinkers. AI might not just support our decisions, 
it could shape the very way we think, encouraging us to expand our cognitive horizons. Studies have shown that tools like predictive text and digital assistants already influence our thought processes subtly by streamlining the way we communicate and access information. It leads us to wonder, what happens when these tools get smarter? Will they begin to guide our thoughts more firmly, perhaps even altering our critical thinking skills as we increasingly rely on them for answers? The potentiality is immense, yet we must tread carefully as we probe these possibilities. As someone who has navigated the waves of technological progression from typewriters to tablets, I recognize that adaptability is crucial. Reflecting on my own experience, I recall the early days of the internet when simply accessing information was revolutionary. Conversations around dinner tables shifted from ideation to instant knowledge, and soon we were no longer remembering phone numbers, but relying on our devices to store them. Today, it's common to outsource additional cognitive loads, remembering facts, planning schedules, and even regular social interactions to our smartphones. Preparing for a future driven by digital thoughts means developing a keen sense of awareness regarding how these technologies intertwine with our cognitive functions. Embracing mindfulness is essential. It enhances our ability to harness technology as a tool without letting it overshadow our own inherent capabilities. Moreover, engaging in continual learning, both formal and informal, would benefit us greatly as we adjust to new realities. Fostering creativity and critical thinking will be more vital than ever. The influx of information can be overwhelming, but by cultivating a habit of reflection and engaging in deep conversations, we can maintain our humanity amid an avalanche of data. Personal insights reveal that connecting with others, whether through discussions, debates, or even casual chats, reinforces our ability to process and question the world around us. For those eager to navigate this tech-driven landscape, seeking balance between reliance on digital tools and nurturing our imaginative faculties emerges as a prudent approach. It's not merely about adapting to change, but also about steering our evolution in this intertwined existence with technology by nurturing resilience and adaptability. One practical tip is to regularly set aside time to unplug from gadgets and engage in activities that spark creativity, be it reading, writing, or simply pondering life's big questions. This reconnection to our own thought processes may prove invaluable as we plunge into an unknown yet thrilling future. Chapter 11, Mindfulness and Self-Reflection. The Benefits of Mindfulness Practice. Mindfulness practice offers a pathway into our own minds, providing a clearer view of our thoughts and emotions, it encourages us to become more aware of the present moment, allowing us to observe our feelings without judgment. This non-judgmental observation can significantly reduce stress and anxiety, creating a buffer against the overwhelming pressures of daily life. When we practice mindfulness, we train our brain to respond more thoughtfully rather than react impulsively. In this space of awareness, it becomes possible to break free from the cycle of negative thinking that often clouds our judgment and affects our emotional well-being. Research supports these observations, revealing that even short bursts of mindfulness practice can lead to improvements in mood and overall mental health. For instance, individuals who engage in mindfulness regularly report feeling more connected to themselves and others. This sense of connection enhances our emotional regulation, making it easier to navigate the ups and downs of life. As we cultivate mindfulness, we also enhance our capacity for empathy and compassion, creating a ripple effect that can improve relationships and foster a sense of community. Consider the story of Sarah, a high-powered executive who found herself constantly stressed and overwhelmed by her responsibilities. After struggling with sleepless nights and racing thoughts, she decided to join a mindfulness group. Initially skeptical, Sarah began practicing mindful breathing exercises. The first time she focused on her breath, she felt a strange sensation of calm spread through her body. As her mindfulness practice deepened, she found herself reacting more patiently in stressful situations at work. Colleagues noticed the shift, commenting on her newfound serenity and poise. Over time, Sarah not only transformed her own experience, but also inspired others in her office to explore mindfulness, creating a more supportive environment. 
Finding moments in your day, whether it's through a few focused breaths or a mindful walk outside, can serve as a starting point for your own transformation. The beauty of mindfulness lies in its accessibility. Anyone can begin to incorporate it into their daily routine, leading to a brighter perspective and a sense of rejuvenation. Techniques for self-reflection. Engaging in self-reflection can feel like opening Pandora's box. Once the lid is off, the rush of thoughts and emotions can be both exhilarating and frightening. To navigate this process effectively, several practical techniques can be incredibly useful. One of the simplest is journaling. Writing your thoughts down not only helps to clarify issues, but it also gives you a chance to track your progress over time. Reflecting on your entries from weeks or months ago can reveal patterns in your thinking and behavior that often go unnoticed in the hustle of daily life. Another powerful technique is mindfulness meditation. By focusing on your breath and allowing thoughts to come and go without judgment, you create a mental space where self-awareness flourishes. This practice can help you uncover deeper insights about yourself, exposing areas that might need attention or improvement. Additionally, asking yourself open-ended questions can foster deeper self-exploration. Instead of merely wondering why a situation upset you, delve into what it reveals about your values, beliefs, and aspirations. These questions can lead to profound realizations about your motivations and desires. Anecdotes of breakthroughs achieved through reflective practices often illustrate their transformative power. For instance, a friend of mine, Jessica, found herself caught in a cycle of negativity after an unpleasant breakup. She felt unworthy and lost, but then she decided to take up journaling. Initially, her entries focused on what went wrong in the relationship and her feelings of hurt. Over time, though, she began to write about solutions and personal growth. One day, she had a breakthrough moment while reviewing her entries. She realized her worth had never been tied to anyone else's opinion of her. This realization not only helped her heal, but propelled her into a new phase of self-discovery and empowerment. Similarly, a colleague of mine, Tom, turned to mindfulness meditation after struggling to manage his fast-paced job and personal life. Each session brought moments of clarity, helping him recognize the patterns of stress he had unknowingly adopted. By merely observing his thoughts rather than getting swept away by them, he identified that he often put work above personal relationships. This awareness inspired him to set boundaries around work hours, leading to more time spent with family and friends. Such breakthroughs achieved through self-reflection may seem subtle, but carry significant weight, influencing our choices and overall happiness. As you explore these techniques for self-reflection, remember that the journey is uniquely yours. Embrace it at your own pace, and don't hesitate to explore what feels comfortable and what doesn't. You might find that the most enlightening moments often arise when you least expect them. Just as the act of journaling or meditating can be a journey of discovery, so too can the small shifts in your perspective lead to monumental changes. Consider setting aside a few minutes each day to try out these techniques, letting the unfolding layers of your thoughts and feelings reveal their secrets over time. Integrating mindfulness into daily routines. Incorporating mindfulness into daily routines can transform mundane tasks into moments of clarity and purpose. One effective strategy is to start small. Select a routine activity, like brushing your teeth or drinking coffee, and focus solely on that experience. Feel the bristles of the toothbrush against your gums or savor the aroma of your brew. By anchoring your mind to these simple moments, it's possible to open a gateway to awareness that permeates the rest of your day. The essence of mindfulness lies in being present, and you don't need grand gestures to cultivate that awareness. Consider integrating mindfulness into your commute. Instead of scrolling through your phone or stressing about the traffic, embrace the sensations around you. Listen to the sounds of nature or the rhythm of the world moving around you. Notice how your body feels in the seat, the temperature of the air, or even the way the light changes as you travel. This practice not only eases anxiety, but also enhances your appreciation for the journey itself. Over time, these small moments accumulate leading to a more fulfilling experience of daily life. Another common yet profound moment can occur during a walk. 
A gentle stroll can easily become a meditative act if you focus on your breath and the sensations in your legs. Observe how each step feels against the ground, the gentle breeze kissing your skin and the colors of nature awakening around you. There's a unique tranquility in these shared experiences. When we practice mindfulness in our routines, we not only cultivate inner peace for ourselves, but also inspire those around us to engage in the present moment. You never know how your quiet peace might ripple outward, subtly inviting others to find their own in the everyday. As you work on integrating mindfulness into your life, remember that it's not all or nothing. Small, consistent actions can lead to profound changes. When you're washing dishes, driving, or even just sitting at your desk, try to gently redirect your thoughts to the sensations and rhythms of the activity at hand. This small shift can unlock a world of peace and presence. Chapter 12, The Societal Impact of Collective Thinking, Group Dynamics, and Decision-Making. Group dynamics play a crucial role in how decisions are made, shaping not just the choices themselves, but also the very fabric of relationships among group members. When people come together to make a decision, their interactions can either foster collaboration and creativity or lead to conflict and confusion. It's fascinating to observe how a single person's opinion can resonate, influencing the entire group's direction. For instance, in settings like board meetings or community organizations, the vocal members can sway the quieter ones, often creating a ripple effect. This phenomenon is partly rooted in the psychological principle of conformity, where individuals adjust their thoughts or behaviors to align with those of the group. Personal anecdotes often highlight the subtle complexities of group dynamics. Imagine a high school project where a charismatic student takes charge, steering discussions and decisions. Initially, this might seem productive. However, as the project progresses, other voices can fade away, leaving a mere echo of group input. This leads to questions about whether the group truly reached a consensus or simply followed the loudest voice. Exploring how discussions can pivot based on who speaks and how often adds depth to our understanding of decision-making processes and raises awareness of the importance of equitable participation. Throughout history, pivotal group decisions have often catalyzed societal change. Take, for example, the group of founders of the United States whose debates and disagreements produced a living document, the Constitution. This remarkable process wasn't without tumult, showcasing how diverse perspectives can either clash or harmonize to create a legacy. Essentially, this document emerged from a confluence of ideas and philosophies, reflecting how group dynamics can both challenge and strengthen collective thinking. In more contemporary scenarios, consider a community coming together to tackle a local crisis, such as an environmental threat. When neighbors pool their knowledge and resources, they often bring to light innovative solutions that might never emerge from a single perspective. This collaborative spirit not only addresses immediate issues, but also fosters a sense of belonging and shared responsibility among the group members. These examples illustrate how decisions made in groups can ripple through society, shaping laws, norms, and community values, an experiment in collaboration that speaks to the human experience. It's essential for each of us, whether in small teams at work or larger communities, to recognize and harness the power of group dynamics to affect meaningful change. As you navigate group situations, whether in the workplace, at your child's school, or in community meetings, pay attention to the dynamics at play. Encourage quieter members to share their thoughts and be conscious of the group's tendency to conform. Foster an environment where diverse opinions are valued because the richness of different perspectives can lead to decisions that are not only wiser, but also more inclusive and forward-thinking. The psychology of influence and persuasion. In group settings, the mechanisms of influence often operate beneath our conscious awareness, shaping attitudes, behaviors, and decisions in subtle but profound ways. Consider a meeting where one person's opinion sways the rest of the group, often without anyone realizing how the dynamics shifted. Social psychologists have long studied these phenomena, spotlighting principles like conformity, social proof, and groupthink. The classic experiments by Solomon Ash demonstrated how individuals could be inclined to conform to a majority opinion, 
even when they knew it was incorrect. This illustrates a fundamental desire to fit in or be accepted by others, highlighting how our social environments compel us to align our thoughts and actions with those around us. It brings to mind moments in my own life, such as when I found myself supporting a decision in a committee meeting simply because everyone else seemed on board. The surprising part, I hadn't really considered the decision fully. The group's consensus created an invisible pressure that influenced my stance. Personal accounts of influence reveal layers of complexity, providing insight into how we both guide and are guided. I recall a time when I persuaded my friend to take up photography, not through a lecture on its merits, but by sharing my joy and excitement as I clicked away, capturing moments that resonated deeply with both of us. My enthusiasm was infectious, and soon we were trudging through parks, eyes fixed on the world through our lenses. These personal stories often resonate more deeply than theoretical discussions. They evoke the essence of human connection. Being influenced can be as simple as sharing an experience. A heartfelt recommendation from a friend feels weightier than a marketing slogan, showcasing the power of personal narratives in persuasion. Similarly, reflecting on how we have persuaded others can highlight our own values and beliefs, as when I convinced my mother to try out a new author I adored only to see her riveted by the book. It emphasizes how intertwined our lives are, creating an ecosystem of influence that permeates through our daily interactions. The ongoing dance of influence reminds us of the importance of self-awareness in our relationships and decision-making processes. We often engage in a constant tug of war between wanting to belong and staying true to our individual perspectives. The ability to discern when we are being manipulated or genuinely supported is a skill worth developing. Engaging critically with the influences in our lives means not only recognizing who sways us, but also understanding our motivations as influencers. A practical tip is to pause in moments of group decision-making to ask oneself, am I genuinely aligned with this opinion or am I swayed by the group's dynamics? This simple query can open pathways to authenticity allowing for deeper connections and more meaningful exchanges in all facets of life. Collective memory and social identity. Collective memory is a powerful force that shapes our cultural and social identities, acting like a tapestry woven from the threads of our shared experiences. When we think of our identities, we often think of personal stories and individual milestones, but it is through collective memory that we find a deeper connection to the communities we belong to. This shared memory creates a sense of belonging and continuity among individuals, linking them across generations. For instance, consider the way national holidays are celebrated. They often reflect a collective understanding of history that resonates with people, fostering a shared identity that can transcend personal differences. The stories told during these commemorative events not only recall events from the past, but also reinforce values and norms that define who we are collectively. Individuals remember where they were during historic events, and these narratives passed down through families and communities serve to honor the sacrifices and achievements of those who came before us, embedding these experiences into the fabric of our identities. Stories play a pivotal role in highlighting the impact of shared memories on community bonding. Think about the rituals and traditions that bring people together, whether it's a harvest festival in a small town, a family reunion filled with laughter and stories of yesteryear, or a community gathering to commemorate a local hero. These narratives, grounded in collective memory, foster unity and strengthen ties among community members. One powerful example is the way neighborhoods remember a lost home after a natural disaster. The shared experience of loss can transform individual grief into a community-wide resilience, where neighbors rally together not only to remember but to rebuild. These collective stories, filled with both heartache and hope, lay the groundwork for a communal identity that is cherished and sustained over time. Personal anecdotes often emerge from these shared histories, illustrating how intertwined our lives truly are. For instance, a conversation during a family dinner can spark memories of grandparents enduring hardship, creating a strong emotional connection that reinforces family identity through storytelling. 
To cultivate a deeper sense of connection through collective memory, consider sharing your own family stories or encouraging others to share theirs. This practice fosters understanding, enhances relationships, and creates a richer tapestry of community. By weaving together individual narratives into the larger narrative of shared history, you contribute to a sense of belonging that can empower individuals and strengthen communities. Every story matters, and recognizing the value of these memories can enhance our social identity while enriching the lives of those around us. Reflect on how your personal experiences fit into the broader narrative of your community and embrace the power of collective memory to foster connection and understanding. Chapter 13, The Evolution of Thought, Historical Shifts in Human Thought. Throughout history, the evolution of human thought has been a fascinating journey marked by significant shifts that shaped societies in profound ways. We can trace these changes through the lenses of philosophy, science, and culture. The shift from the medieval mindset, rooted in religious dogma, to the Enlightenment, which embraced reason and empirical evidence, exemplifies how our understanding of the world has transformed. This period cultivated a belief in progress, individuality, and the power of human reason, allowing people to question authority and seek knowledge beyond traditional boundaries. The Industrial Revolution further catalyzed this shift, leading to dramatic changes in human thought as people began to embrace technology and innovation. With the advent of machines, the way we viewed labor, community, and even self-worth began to evolve. No longer were people just cogs in the wheel of an agrarian society. They became inventors, entrepreneurs, and artists in their own right. Meanwhile, the two world wars introduced existential questions regarding morality and humanity itself, propelling thinkers like Jean-Paul Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir to explore existence, freedom, and the human condition. Reflecting on these historical shifts illuminates how they have impacted individuals on a personal level. For many, the Enlightenment sparked a hunger for knowledge that transcended social classes. Imagine a peasant in France who, inspired by Enlightenment ideals, began to educate herself and questioned her limited role in society. The ripples of those philosophical ideas could be felt in the salons of Paris and in the hearts of many striving for liberation from oppression. Individual consciousness began to shift, allowing people to envision paths for themselves that were previously seen as unattainable. The philosophical underpinnings of evolution, philosophy at its core, is a quest for understanding. When we delve into the evolution of thoughts and ideas, we discover a rich tapestry woven through centuries of human experience reflecting our ever-changing understanding of the world. The journey of these thoughts often mirrors the evolution of life itself. Just as species adapt over time to their environments, so do our ideas evolve in response to new information and experiences. This phenomenon can be traced through the collective consciousness of humanity, from ancient philosophers who pondered existence and ethics under the glow of candlelight to modern thinkers grappling with the implications of technology and artificial intelligence. Each era contributes its chapter to a long and intricate narrative of human thought. Consider the philosophical debates that flourished during the Renaissance, which breathed new life into ideas that had lain dormant. The rebirth of classical thought paved the way for scientific inquiries that challenged prevailing norms. With every new discovery, be it Copernicus proposing a heliocentric model or Darwin articulating his theory of evolution, we witness a philosophical evolution that not only reshapes our understanding of nature, but also compels us to rethink our role within that framework. The films we watch, the books we read, and the conversations we engage in continue to morph our ideas, illustrating that philosophical evolution is not merely historical. It is a constant, dynamic process. Reflecting on our personal journeys invites us to examine how our unique experiences have shaped our philosophical outlooks. There was a time when I, like many, held a simplistic view of the world, one that adhered strictly to black and white moral frameworks. Life, however, has a way of painting in shades of gray. I remember a pivotal moment during my college years when a class discussion turned into a profound debate about morality. As differing perspectives surfaced, I found my rigid beliefs bending and shifting, akin to the branches of a tree swaying in the wind. 
That day I understood that philosophical thought is not only about answering profound questions, but also about embracing the discomfort of uncertainty. Over the years, moments of challenge and joy have continued to sculpt my philosophy. The paradigm of personal relationships, marked by love's complexity and the pain of loss, has nudged me toward a more empathetic worldview. These experiences teach us that human connection transcends rigid doctrines. They remind us that our thoughts are often interwoven with the thoughts and feelings of those around us. Sharing stories, whether through casual conversations or deep discussions, enriches our understanding and fosters a communal evolution in thinking. Embracing this interconnectedness allows us to grow, not just in knowledge, but in heart, a vital lesson in navigating the philosophical landscape of our lives. Consider examining your own beliefs and the experiences that have shaped them. Engage in conversations with those who challenge your ideas, for this exchange can lead to unexpected growth and insight. Philosophy lives and breathes through dialogue and reflection, enabling us to evolve beyond mere existence into a life richly informed by thought. Future trends. Where is human thought headed? In a rapidly evolving world, our cognitive processes are not immune to change. From the way we consume information to how we engage in critical thinking, the trends shaping our thoughts are fascinating. The rise of digital technology is transforming our mental landscapes, introducing artificial intelligence and machine learning as new players in the cognitive arena. Many wonder how our brains will adapt. Will they become more efficient or might we risk becoming dependent on the tools we create? As we become accustomed to instant access to vast stores of knowledge, there's a question of whether our ability to retain information diminishes. Our attention spans may be shrinking, influenced by constant notifications and the allure of scrolling through endless feeds. Yet, this is also a time of potential evolution. Just as we've adapted to new technologies before, our minds may learn to process and synthesize information in more profound ways, potentially leading to greater creative thinking and problem-solving skills. Reflecting on personal experiences enriches our understanding of these cognitive shifts. I remember an encounter with a young artist who, fascinated by the digital world, created stunning pieces using algorithms. She spoke passionately about how each stroke of code felt like a dialogue with her creativity, allowing her to explore artistic boundaries she never thought possible. This made me realize that technology doesn't merely serve as a tool. It fundamentally influences how we think, perceive, and create. Another time, I attended a seminar where a keynote speaker discussed the concept of digital empathy. He shared a story about how a tech startup combined virtual reality with social awareness, allowing users to experience the challenges faced by marginalized communities. This idea struck me as a profound shift in cognitive engagement, where technology is fostering empathy rather than distance. As we navigate this new cognitive terrain, these anecdotes remind us that while the future holds uncertainties, the human capacity for adaptation and innovation remains vibrant. It's crucial to recognize and harness these changes, embracing the journey of exploring how our thoughts and actions may evolve in response to the world around us. In adapting to these trends, keep an open mind and be proactive about your learning. Engage with new technologies, not just as user tools, but as collaborators in your cognitive journey. Embrace change, as it may lead to your most profound insights and creative breakthroughs yet. Chapter 14, Identity and the Concept of Self. The Formation of Personal Identity. Personal identity is a complex tapestry woven from countless threads of experiences, influences, and reflections. Understanding how we come to see ourselves in the world is an ongoing journey that begins in our early years and morphs throughout our lives. It's like being an artist, continually adding color and texture to a canvas that reflects who we are. As we grow, our identities are shaped by our interactions with our families, friends, culture, and society. Each relationship we build tells us something about who we are and who we aspire to become. Consider how pivotal environments shape this identity. The neighborhood we grew up in, the schools we attended, even the stories shared at family gatherings, play significant roles in crafting our self-perception. These experiences can be empowering or limiting, nudging us in certain directions or constraining us within boundaries. 
We absorb societal norms and expectations, and in the process, our identities become a blend of innate tendencies and external pressures. It's a profound dance of self-discovery, where we question who we are and how we fit into this vibrant world. Pivotal moments often become markers on our identity maps, moments we can look back on and trace our growth. These transformative experiences can range from seemingly mundane to deeply profound, yet they all contribute to our understanding of ourselves. Think of a high school graduation. For some, it's a proud leap into the future, while for others, it's a bittersweet farewell to childhood. Each person's emotional response builds a narrative that defines their transition into adulthood. As we navigate these experiences, it becomes clear that personal identity is fluid, constantly reshaping with each new encounter, each lesson learned. Engaging with our stories, both the triumphs and setbacks, empowers us to embrace our authentic selves. A useful practice is to reflect regularly on these experiences, perhaps through journaling or conversations with trusted friends, as it will help you understand and articulate the unique elements that define you. Fluidity of identity, change over time. Identity is one of those intriguing concepts that we often take for granted, yet it's far from static. Each day, every interaction, and each experience adds a brushstroke to the canvas of who we are. Consider a time in your life when you underwent a significant change, perhaps moving to a new city, starting a different job, or entering a new relationship. In each of these moments, the landscape of your identity began to shift, influenced by fresh perspectives and unforeseen challenges. We continuously adapt and reshape our identities, often without even realizing it. The people we meet, the books we read, and the hardships we endure all play crucial roles in transforming our self-perception, leading us to embrace different aspects of our identity that may have previously remained dormant. If you think deeply, how many different versions of yourself can you recall? From the wide-eyed child to the rebellious teenager to the contemplative adult you are today, each phase crafted through a unique combination of experiences and revelations. Reflecting on our personal journeys often reveals moments of significant metamorphosis that redefined who we are. There was a time in my life when I found myself at a crossroads. A job offer had me thinking about moving to a city I had never lived in before. Anxiety bubbled up as I weighed the prospect of leaving friends behind and immersing myself in the unknown. But I took the leap. That move not only introduced me to a vibrant community and new friends, but also ignited a sense of independence I hadn't fully acknowledged before. In the years that followed, I learned to embrace change, developing a more resilient identity. Each new chapter brought forth trials that pushed me to recalibrate my identity, finding strength, humor, and curiosity about myself that I hadn't known existed. Such experiences illustrate that identity is also about coming to terms with fluidity, learning to celebrate the many facets and changes within ourselves. Every individual undergoes fluctuating cycles of identity transformation, with some changes monumental and others subtle, but equally important. To navigate this fluidity effectively, it's essential to practice self-compassion. Acknowledge that it's completely normal to evolve, and it's vital to embrace the learning process that comes with change. One practical way to welcome this fluidity is to journal regularly, jotting down thoughts and feelings about your experiences. You may be surprised at how much clarity and insight you gain about your evolving identity through this simple practice. As perspectives shift, allowing yourself the grace to evolve can lead to deeper connections with yourself and others. Self-perception and its psychological effects. Understanding how self-perception influences behavior and thought is crucial to our lives. Self-perception acts as a lens through which we view the world and ourselves. When we see ourselves positively, we tend to approach challenges with confidence, believing that we can achieve our goals. Conversely, a negative self-perception can lead to self-doubt, which often manifests as anxiety and avoidance. Think about the last time you faced an obstacle. If you believed you were capable, perhaps you tackled it head on. However, if you were riddled with doubt about your abilities, you might have hesitated or even given up. Such is the power of self-perception. It's not just a reflection of who we are. It shapes our choices and behaviors every single day. 
many individuals experience personal journeys that redefine their self-perception, allowing them to foster growth in unexpected ways. Take, for instance, a woman who spent most of her youth feeling invisible, overshadowed by a sibling more accomplished in academics and athletics, until one day she stumbled upon a creative writing group that ignited her passion. As she wrote and shared her work, her perceptions started to shift. Met with encouragement from peers, she began to see herself not just as an afterthought, but as an artist with a unique voice. This transformation did not occur overnight. It involved introspection, vulnerability, and the courage to explore her identity outside societal expectations. Tales like hers remind us that the paths toward redefining self-perception can be paved with realizations that eventually lead to a deeper understanding of our worth. These narratives underscore the importance of nurturing our self-perception as they affirm our inherent worth and capabilities. To actively reshape our self-views, we can practice self-compassion and embrace our imperfections, seeing them as segments of our human experience rather than flaws. Engaging in activities that promote self-discovery, like journaling or artistic expression, can also illuminate aspects of ourselves that we may have previously overlooked. By focusing on gratitude and seeking support from communities that uplift us, we can carve out a positive self-narrative, one that celebrates growth and resilience in the face of adversity. Chapter 15. The Future of Human Thought Predictions for Human Cognitive Evolution. As we look toward the future, it's intriguing to consider how human cognition might continue to evolve. One of the most palpable trends is how our increasingly digital lives are shaping the way we think and process information. With smartphones and various apps at our fingertips, individuals are not only accessing information faster than ever, but are also developing an unprecedented capacity for multitasking. However, this comes with a catch. While we might become faster at processing data and reacting to stimuli, it remains to be seen if our deep thinking capabilities will suffer. Will future generations develop shorter attention spans or will they find innovative ways to engage deeply with complex ideas amidst the chaos of distractions? Some researchers speculate that future cognitive evolution might promote a different form of intelligence, one that emphasizes adaptability and the ability to synthesize information across multiple platforms rather than depth of expertise in singular areas. My own observations about cognitive development trends resonate strongly with these predictions. I often catch myself in conversations with younger people and am struck by their impressive ability to reference a multitude of facts from various sources, but I sometimes worry about how deeply they engage with any one topic. I remember a time in my own life when deep reading was a regular part of my day. Engaging with books allowed me to immerse myself in complex theories and narratives, which shaped my understanding of the world profoundly. As I watch younger generations consume content in bite-sized forms, I can't help but ponder how this affects their critical thinking skills. Are they losing the art of nuance in arguments? Are they forgetting how to ponder deeply about a concept before forming opinions? These questions haunt my thoughts as I navigate my own learning journey in this rapidly shifting landscape. Moreover, the integration of artificial intelligence in our daily lives poses intriguing implications for our cognitive evolution. As AI becomes more adept at performing tasks we once thought uniquely human, such as problem solving and pattern recognition, we may see significant changes in what we prioritize in learning and development. Sharper analytical skills might shift towards creativity and emotional understanding, as these will remain distinctly human attributes. The very fabric of our cognition is at play, continually influenced by our surroundings, technology, and history. For anyone looking to cultivate their own cognitive capabilities, prioritizing time for reflection and mindfulness amidst the digital noise might be the key to harnessing the benefits of both traditional deep thinking and our fast-paced world. The role of artificial intelligence in future thinking. Artificial intelligence is shaping the way we think in profound ways that we are just beginning to understand. The potential influence of AI on human thought processes is like peering into a vast and intricate tapestry woven together by strands of logic and emotion. 
Imagine a future where our decision-making isn't just driven by instinct or experience, but is enriched by data-driven insights and predictive analytics. AI doesn't just provide answers. It opens the door to new ways of viewing problems. Engaging with AI can enhance our cognitive faculties by presenting us with possibilities we might not have considered, leading us to think more critically and creatively. For example, while brainstorming ideas for a project, an AI might suggest paths that, while initially foreign to us, spark an innovative approach. This interaction can nurture a mindset that embraces complexity and uncertainty, qualities increasingly important in our fast-paced world. Sharing experiences of interacting with AI reveals a spectrum of cognitive impacts that are at times illuminating and at others unsettling. I recall the first time I used a virtual assistant to schedule my day. The assistant not only kept me organized, but also recommended breaks based on my productivity patterns. Initially, I felt a sense of loss, as if relying on a machine was diluting my personal agency. Yet as I delved deeper, I recognized it wasn't about replacing my thinking, but augmenting it. Conversations with AI can be akin to those we have with wise friends. Sometimes they challenge our perspectives or gently nudge us toward sharper queries and better conclusions. It's fascinating how these interactions can reshape our intuition, turning data into insights and prompting more nuanced dialogues with ourselves. The dance between human thought and artificial intelligence not only enriches our intellectual landscape, but also poses ethical questions that deserve our attention. For instance, as we increasingly rely on algorithms to inform our choices, we must remain vigilant about how this dependency shapes our critical thinking skills. Will we become more passive consumers of information rather than active seekers? It's essential to maintain a balance, using AI as a tool for enhancement rather than as a crutch. Engaging with AI thoughtfully can help us sharpen our analytical skills while also inviting us to be active participants in the conversation about technology's role in our lives. Embracing this dual engagement, being mindful of how we use technology while actively seeking to challenge and expand our thoughts will ultimately empower us to navigate the complexities of tomorrow. Ethical considerations for the future of thought. As our understanding of cognition deepens, we must also grapple with the ethical implications that accompany these advances. Consider the way technology is reshaping our thought processes, particularly the emergence of artificial intelligence and neuro-enhancement tools. These innovations offer incredible benefits. Imagine being able to enhance memory or learning capabilities at the touch of a button. However, this comes with profound ethical questions. Who gets access to these tools? Will they widen the gap between those who can afford enhancements and those who cannot? Furthermore, what does it mean for individuality and creativity if our thoughts can be optimized or even modified externally? The essence of being human is entwined with our unique thoughts and experiences, so the idea of them being altered for efficiency brings us to a moral crossroads. The journey toward a future with enhanced cognition could lead us to a society that values conformity and optimization over authenticity and diversity, challenging the very foundation of our moral frameworks. In reflecting on these dilemmas, moral questions arise that can feel overwhelming. For instance, if we can classify thoughts as beneficial or harmful through advanced brain mapping technologies, should we have the right to alter or suppress what might be deemed negative thinking patterns? This echoes the age-old debate between free will and societal responsibility. Stories abound of individuals struggling with cognitive biases or harmful thoughts who might benefit from intervention. However, how do we balance autonomy with the desire to help? There's a thin line between acting in someone's best interest and infringing on their personal liberty. These complexities underscore a central theme in the future of thought. As we strive to create a better society, we must ask ourselves what sacrifices we are willing to make and whether those sacrifices will ultimately lead to a more equitable world. Hopefully, those grappling with these issues will remember that ethical decision-making is often less about finding the right answer and more about engaging in thoughtful dialogue with ourselves and with others. Looking ahead, it will be crucial to cultivate a framework that respects personal autonomy while promoting societal well-being.
Engaging in dialogue across various perspectives can be enriching. Consider organizing community forums or discussions to explore these concepts, enabling diverse voices to be heard. By fostering a culture of ethical reflection and mutual respect, we can navigate the emerging landscape of thought with a thoughtful approach. As we explore enhancements and interventions, let's prioritize the values that define our humanity, ensuring that compassion and understanding guide our advancements in cognition. As we come to the end of Mindscapes, mapping the terrain of human thought, we hope you found this exploration as enriching and enlightening as we intended. We've journeyed through the intricacies of the mind, uncovering the deep connections between our thoughts, emotions, culture, and the world around us. You've mapped out the cognitive landscapes that define our identities, influence our decisions, and shape our reality. But this is just the beginning. The knowledge and insights you've gained here are tools for your continued journey, a journey that doesn't end with this audiobook. Remember, the landscape of your mind is vast and ever-changing. There are always new paths to discover, new thoughts to explore, and deeper layers of self-awareness to uncover. At Mindful Literary, we believe that understanding the mind is key to living a more intentional and fulfilling life. We encourage you to take these lessons forward, applying them in your daily life, reflecting on your own thought processes, and continuing to cultivate mindfulness and self-awareness. Thank you for joining us on this intellectual and emotional journey. May the maps we've drawn together serve as guides on your continued quest for knowledge, growth, and self-discovery. Until our next exploration, keep questioning, keep reflecting, and keep growing.